You know, I was looking for some better way of putting window tinting on my vehicle, and I got thinking, sunglasses are kind of like window tinting for humans. Make you look intimidating, mysterious, or just plain cool. And the sunglasses will do that for people. Why can't they also do it for my truck? Because you get those homemade do-it-yourself window tinting kits, and they never go on even. After a few weeks, it starts to look like Lawrence Welk night at the seniors' home. All bubbles and wrinkles. And then at night, there's not enough light you can see where you're going. Whereas with the handyman window tinting system, you're in control. You just flip up your tint for maximum visibility. We had what they call a horticultural breakthrough up at the lodge this week. I've got a product that I think every homeowner is going to want to buy. I got a new kind of grass seed here. See? Like that? Huh? <laughs> Actually, it was created by accident, but who wasn't? Huh? <laughs> yeah, what happened was I, uh, I knocked over a shelf in the tool shed uh, quite a while ago. Uh, some of the grass seed mixed down with some of the paint and the chemicals and so on on the dirt floor. I didn't think anything of it. But six months later, look at this. The grass grew this high, and then it stopped growing. Huh? A perfect one. I, had, I have a look at those lawnmowers of yours, and, and they're not worth much. You oh. got the, the mismatched wheels and, and the broom handles. Yeah. That you're going to have trouble selling those red. <laughs> I've never seen a wrench used as a lawnmower blade before. Either. <laughs> you know. Dalton, I don't care if you have to sell them by the pound. I don't need them anymore. Well, you're not getting a ride anymore. No, 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 no. Look at this, Dalton. I got a new kind of grass seed. Imagine a lawn that only grows that high. Oh, boy. What'd you put on that? Shortening? <laughs> <laughs> all right, you know, now, 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 personally, I could listen to that kind of humor all day, you know. <laughs> but luckily, this isn't the day, so I'm going to take the grass seed. I'm going to reseed the whole lodge property. Red, Red if, if we got grass that only grows a couple of inches, we could be sitting on a gold mine, you know? We, we should put out a big announcement. Yeah, okay. But let's wait till we sell the lawnmowers. Huh? <laughs> I'm here to give you some advice on doing your fireworks display this year. <laughs> now, my suggestion is to forget about the firecrackers and blow up some old furniture with dynamite. <laughs> now, given your choice, would you rather see some pathetic little sparky lights shooting up through the air and going pop, very quietly, I might add, or chunks of dirt and wood flying up into the air, accompanied by a thunderous explosion? That's what I thought. <laughs> Now, through the magic of television and this handy remote detonator, I am going to let you watch my explosions display for this year. Now, what I've done for your viewing pleasure is I've named each explosion just like the different firecrackers are named according to their particular properties. Now, this one I call the exploding dresser. <laughs> and this one I call the exploding computer table. And this one, the exploding bookshelf. Uh, I haven't got a name for this one yet, but it's my favorite. And just like the real fireworks, I've set it to music. This thing isn't working. Local animal control officer Ed Fritt will be in any minute now. I think he's going to bring a bird of some kind. I'm not sure what kind. He has so many types of birds that he brings. Oh, here he is. What you... Oh, he's got a falcon. That's great. You got the falcon. That's terrific. Shh, not so loud, Red. What are you trying to do? Make it mad or something? You trying to scare it into a frenzy or what? Oh, sorry. I mean, it's tame. It's tame, isn't it? Well, you know, it used to be quite tame, but. It's getting a little older now. Yeah. A little bitter. Oh. <laughs> We're looking at a very violent bird here. Why, 
why didn't why didn't you bring a different falcon? Well, I, I wanted to, yeah. but I couldn't get this one off my arm. <laughs> oh boy, he's, he's dug right into your bare wrist there. Yeah. <laughs> Shouldn't you have one of those protective gloves on? You man? mean like this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would definitely recommend that. Does that hurt at all? Very much so. Yeah. Intensely painful. You know, it's, it's not bleeding. No, no, no. But uh, I think once the talons come out of my skin, <laughs> some bandages would come in mighty handy. Maybe a few blood donors. I'm a type A. All right, all right. Ed, why don't you just take the little hood off and then he'll just, you know, kind of fly around a little bit, eh? Yeah, are you out of your mind? No, no, I'm just thinking that, you know, if he flies away, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll let go of your arm. Or, well, maybe most of it. Oh. <laughs> but I'm not in a big hurry to test that theory. It, it is a very dangerous bird. Boy, you know, he looks pretty calm to me. Oh, that's what he wants you to think. <laughs> oh, yeah. But all the while, he's sitting there thinking up new techniques for attack and kill. That's all these birds think about is kill, kill, kill. Although you may be right. Yeah. Uh, he seems to have loosened his grip a little yeah, bit. Sure. I think he's relaxing. Maybe if we just give him a couple of more minutes. Well, how much more time do we have? Well, about two minutes. I... Oh, oh uh, boy, unless that was a mood swing. I, 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 think, I think your falcon is uh, deceased. Yeah, well... I gotta go get a bird removed. All right, let's hear it for Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Now, watching television is kind of the birthright of all males. And the latest deal are these big screen TVs with the surround sound. They'll set you back a cool 10 grand. Well, if you got that kind of money, you're probably not watching this kind of show. So today on Handyman Corner, I'm gonna show you how to take a simple black and white nine inch TV and turn it into a big screen surround sound system that'll rock your world. <laughs> now the first consideration is comfort. Get yourself comfortable and then decide where to put the TV. I think I see a spot. Okay, now we're ready to face our first problem, which is how do you make a nine inch screen look big? Well, the same way you make the horses at the track look big, or the neighbor in the bikini look big with a pair of binoculars. Now we need a way to mount the binoculars onto the TV so that it's always in focus. How about using a broom, huh? That would work great, especially during sweeps week. <laughs> I'll probably be recognized by the Academy for this next step. What do 3D glasses have that makes them work? That's right, color. So if I just duct tape these 3D glasses to the eyepieces of my binoculars, eh, what effects that gonna have on my black and white TV? I'm gonna be getting two video effects in one. <laughs> I smell an Emmy. <laughs> that means I can now concentrate on the audio component of our home theater system. Now with the, with the surround sound speakers, it's not no good because you got speakers all over the place. There's no room for you. I say, why don't you go another way with it? Why don't you mount the speaker in such a way that the sound will come to you, huh? <laughs> the sound will surround you all right at any speed you want. And to maximize my reception here, I added a satellite dish. Actually, it's just one of those metal colanders you use to strain pasta, but I'd rather be straining my eyes than straining my fettuccine. <laughs> so remember, if the women don't find you handsome, you should at least find you handy. <laughs> Oh man, I'm aiming at the wrong satellite. I'm gonna talk to you older guys who get in trouble when you try to help. I'm talking about when you see your wife or your kids struggling to do something and you butt in and say, here, give me that. They think you're trying to show off, be a know-it-all, trying to inflate your ego. Nothing could be farther from the truth. Your ego is under so much pressure, the last thing you want to do is inflate it. And your wife, of course, has that ego pin that she keeps handing. No, no, when you say, here, give me that, you're trying to save them from that painful learning curve you've gone through. You know that when something's stuck or doesn't fit or isn't straight, you just haven't hit it hard enough yet. 
At our age, there's almost nothing that we haven't dropped, hammered, rolled, driven through, smashed, cut too short, or burned. <laughs> we have this vast knowledge to share, and we want to save our loved ones from the pain and injury. You see, on them, a, a cut or a bruise is an unsightly blemish. On us, it's just one more knot hole on an already very blemished tree. <laughs> So just tell your family the next time you say, here, give me that, you're not trying to be the star, you're just offering to take one for the team. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> Man, I don't get it. The same grass that grew only two inches long in the shed is a foot long out in the yard. And it hasn't even rained since we planted. Mind you, the grass is kind of wet and sticky all the time. <laughs> and it smells like paint or kerosene or nuclear waste, I think. <laughs> Odd thing. Good news, Red! <laughs> I sold all the lawnmowers! <laughs> oh, man, oh, that's too bad. I'm gonna have to get them all back. Oh, no, no, you can't do that. Look, look. Got a hundred bucks for them. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Who, who gave you that much for those units? Some moron from the city. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Have you, got, have you got his phone number? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah right here. Yeah, yeah. No, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna have to call him back and tell him the deal's off. Sorry. What? Yeah. Oh, all right. You think you know what you're doing? Yeah, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Boy, it's rough, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Nice lawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you guys put in new septics and didn't give me a chance to bid on them? No, 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 no. We put in a whole new lawn. Oh. Yeah. Because I'll tell you, business has been pretty slow for me lately because of the drought. Yeah. And to top it all off, the county gave some other guy the pumping job to clean out their septics. I never even got a sniff. <laughs> what is good news in your business? Rick, I, I got the guy on the phone. He says we can have the lawnmowers, but he wants his hundred bucks back, plus another fifty. All right, no, that's fine, that's fine. We got a deal, tell him that's Brent, fine. Brent, Brent, we'll be uh, down 50 bucks. Not if he takes a check. <laughs> oh, oh, Red Green, this is great. You're just in time for my second animated feature. Do you get my notice? Well, I'm here, so no. <laughs> This one's much better. Yeah. I've improved the drawings. I think I've captured the character voices much better, too. Yeah. yeah. Very reminiscent of Walt Disney's early progress, I think. Yeah. A little more goofy, a little less Mickey Mouse. No, it's more educational. Uh -oh. Yeah, this one's all about sun protection. Oh. Here we go. Oh, would you like some popcorn before we start? Yeah, sure. I like it after it's popped. Suit yourself. <laughs> oh, uh, do you want to use the bathroom first? No, but I wouldn't mind using the exit. No, no, shh. <laughs> Down in front. No talking. Here we go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, sun safety is important. Know that the sun is your enemy and you must protect yourself against its harmful death rays. Do either of you know how we can finally destroy the sun once and for all? Uh, I really don't think we need to destroy the sun, Ranger Gord, I think. Think again. Some people would have you believe that the sun is simply a big harmless ball of burning wood and dead leaves. Well, they're wrong. The sun is a living being set on destroying mankind. So, we must abolish the sun from the sky. Here, take these ray guns. And we'll show that sun with these ray guns we can give as good as we get. Uh, Gord, I don't think we need to blast the sun. It's uh, crazy. Uh, I'll just put on some sunblock lotion and uh, well, I'll be fine. Well, that's just beauty, little red. You can just sit back covered in your fancy lotion and play defense for the rest of your life, never once standing up to the sun. Meanwhile, little Harold and I will fight the sun to the death if we have to. to save mankind. <laughs> To the death? Oh. You're not right in the head, Gord. Oh no, the sun has been eavesdropping on us. 
It knows what we're up to. There's no time. We must destroy it now. <laughs> Your incredible superhuman powers and godlike body are no match for me. And your pathetic little friends can't help you either. Ha 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 ha! Joke's on you. They were pathetic and little, yes, but they weren't my friends. <laughs> come on, drop it. Drop your gun. Hey! Ow! Come on! Stop it! Stop it, Gord! Oh, please! Oh, don't destroy me! <laughs> Do you promise not to shoot death rays at people anymore? Yeah, say it! I promise not to shoot death rays at people anymore. It's a deal! <laughs> well, folks, you heard the sun. Thanks to me, we no longer live in fear of the sun's harmful death rays. I sure learned my lesson. Now everyone can spend hours and hours in the sun without a care in the world. Well, everyone but those two. Okay, welcome to Mike's Team Talk. And uh, as you can see, I have a guest on the show today. Well, it's not really a guest, it's just Harold. But I can explain that, okay? Uh, today, we're uh, celebrating Career Day. So naturally, we needed uh, somebody with a career on the show, but around here, that's not so easy to find. So that's where you come in, Harold. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't really know if it's much of a career yet. You know, I'm, I'm still trying to, to learn and grow and be better at my job and reap the rewards that come when you take responsibility for yourself. See, he's weird like that. It's great. <laughs> so, what's the difference between a job and a career? Oh, okay. Well, uh, to me, you know, personally, um, a, a job is something that's temporary. You know, you, you stick at it for a little while until you quit or get fired. Or escape. <laughs> or, or escape, yes. <laughs> Yes, all right. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, a, a career is something that you plan on sticking at for a long time, you know, and, and climb up that ladder until you retire. So, like, uh, a job is like drawing one to two, and a career is like basically a life sentence? <laughs> Similar. <laughs> so, tell me about your job, Harold. Uh, okay. What does your lawyer get you? <laughs> um, well, I'm an assistant account executive at Multicorp International Incorporated. And what do they do? <laughs> they're, um, well, my God. Oh. <laughs> they're very big. They're huge. They're huge, Mike. Good enough. And what do you do in it? I work with files. <laughs> and a filing cabinet. <laughs> I didn't bring one along today for show and tell or nothing, because one guy tried that one time and he got fired. <laughs> It's dog eat dog out there. Yeah, yeah, no, no, you're right, it is. Because when, like, when I do have work to take home on the weekend or something like that, I got like a mini filing cabinet. It's called an attache case. <laughs> and my boss, if he ever wants to get in touch with me, they gave me a cellular phone. <laughs> so, like, so like you work all alone, all day in a windowless cubicle, and then you take more work home with you at night, and then if your boss has any other ideas, he can call you up whenever he wants? Yeah, that's my job. <laughs> and you're looking at doing this for life? <laughs> Did they give you three squares a day? No. Well, I have learned so much today. I used to think a job was pretty bad, but a career really sucks, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show, Harold. No, I, you know, I think you missed the idea of the whole concept, you know? The, uh... Oh, excuse me. It's probably the word. <laughs> All right, thanks for being on the show, and uh, and please don't let this happen to you. Well, we've had a couple of setbacks. The grass is five feet high. The lawnmowers won't cut it. The toxic fumes make you lightheaded. And the darn stuff turns everything green. You know, I'm starting to think this new grass seed wasn't such a great idea. Ow! What the heck? What's going on? Red, is that you? Ow! 
Winston, the door's over here, to your left. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was getting claustrophobic out there. You can't see the buildings or any of the scrap water heaters or anything. No. Actually, the lodge never looked better. Huh? You know what's weird, though? Everybody else's grass is dead because there's been no rain. Yeah. But we got blades in spades. Yeah. Trouble, Rick! Trouble! What? 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 It looks like rain. Look how dark it is outside. Holy smoke. We better get up on the roof. The grass might grow 30 feet high. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, if it grows that high, it'll just fall over, won't it? Well, you never know. Some things can defy gravity. Remember Tammy Ferguson's hairdo? Ooh. Oh, boy. <laughs> Well, I want to know what's going to happen if it rains, because I'll tell you, in the sewage business, one thing you learn to hate, and that's surprises. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I'm just going to throw some water on this, this sample patch along here and see what happens. I hope the roof holds. What? What? This glass doesn't grow with water. It dissolves in water. Wow. That's why it did so well during the drought. That's right. <laughs> Boy, that grass is disappearing faster than breath mints at a singles bar. Look at that toxic runoff. It's heading right into the lake. What are we going to do about that? Ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, meet in time. Yeah, you guys go ahead. I'll be right down. <laughs> Don't let the grass grow. Oh, never mind. <laughs> if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. I learned one thing today. You just let nature take its course. And when I get home tonight, I hope you're going to be awake. I'm hoping to show you what I'm talking about. Thanks for watching. Have myself and the whole gang up the lodge. Keep your stick on the ice. Sit her down. Sit her down. Okay. Oh, all right. All right. <laughs> Wando, Omni, Funkus, Moritati. Sit down. <laughs> All right, uh, men, bow your heads for the man's prayer. I'm a man, but I can change if I have to, I guess. <laughs> Remember, guys, grass is always greener in the middle of the lake. <laughs>